Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite subject, gentrification. That's right. We're going to be talking about, you know, what is really causing it? Who is causing it? Is it a bad thing? Is it a good thing? And how is it going to be affecting you? Now, we're going to be driving around the city of Merida, Yucatan. You're going to be seeing all kinds of different uh, views of all kinds of different streets, you know, in the city from you know, just footage that I've taken as I've been driving around this whole time. So just in case anyone out there is new um, and doesn't know who I am and what I'm doing out here. Um, but again, I live in uh, the southern part of Mexico and I like to talk about all kinds of topics regarding these issues, you know, that, uh, you know, all of us are dealing with, you know, whether you're thinking about moving out here or you already live out here or you're Mexican or not or what have you, it, you know, it doesn't matter who you are out there. Um, it seems like uh, I have a lot of useful information not just in this video but in other videos that i make on my channel um and so let's just get right into it enough of enough of an intro let's just get right into it so as you know i talk about gentrification in many of my videos but in this video we're going to just concentrate and talk about this complete issue because there's a lot of misconceptions as to what is really causing gentrification in Mexico and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. And, uh, you know, let's just get right into it. Let's just dive right into this whole thing. So right now, you know, with the whole situation that's happening with the dollar losing value against the Mexican peso and therefore making it more expensive for people coming out here to Mexico, you know, in order to, you know, live and uh, retire and all that stuff. Well, <clears throat> Why is it that there is still that whole misconception that foreigners and only foreigners are the ones that are driving up all the prices and they're the ones that are causing gentrification and that the gentrification is only for them when in the same, you know, on the other side of the token, it seems like foreigners are leaving Mexico more and more every day for other countries as Mexico keeps getting more expensive, you know, in their currency and so let's just start off with that simply that the gentrification isn't really being caused by foreigners or foreign investment it's actually being caused by mexicans and mexican investment and let's talk about that so there's a lot of mexicans that live abroad you know whether they were born in the usa or canada or another country or they were taken to the those countries as a small child it doesn't matter. You know, there's a lot of Mexicans abroad. You know, maybe they just went to, to the USA or Canada to work in the strawberry fields for just a few months. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, a lot of Mexicans are coming back home. That's it. And so most of these Mexicans, the longer they've been in the USA for the most part, well, guess what? The more resources they're going to have out here in Mexico, whether it's going to be, you know, things as a retirement or a pension, or they already have family out here, or they've already built property out here or business or what have you. It doesn't matter. You know, there's a lot of Mexicans that are coming back home. And since a lot of Mexicans are coming back home with their foreign earned dollars that every day are losing more and more value and at the same time they're losing their freedoms and, and all this other jazz you know that you know as to why they're leaving the usa canada whatever um and coming back home um they are and so they're bringing money and they're spending a lot of it here now another thing that's happening is that again as i've talked about many times before and especially in recent years you know what's really going on is that the typical Mexican out there is making more and more money. And not only are they making more money, but their currency is worth more. So when you, you know, put that together, they have more spending power. Therefore, they're going to stimulate the economy a lot more than they usually do. And so therefore, you know, they want nice things. You know, they want things like Starbucks, okay? They want things like the Texas Roadhouse. You know, they want to go to the malls and enjoy a lot of the fancy things that we enjoy in our countries. And so now, you know, that whole idea of uh, for a Mexican having to go abroad in order to experience these first world things or this, uh, you know, uh, you know, all these fancy things, 
is, is you know, again, it's, it's falling by the wayside and it's becoming more of a myth each and every day because more Mexicans are realizing, hey, wait a minute, we have access to all of this and we can afford it now. So let's uh, let's go have some fun. Let's go bowling with our triple chocolate, you know, while we have uh, some, you know, McDonald's double cheeseburgers and chicken nuggets. Bruh. Now, I know what a lot of people are already going to say in the comments. And they're going to be they're going to be saying, hey, Jose, but it says here in the official government, blah, 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 or in the official government, yada, 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 that the typical Mexican only makes like three hundred dollars a, a month or they only make this amount and everyone's really poor. Where are you getting your numbers from? Where am I getting my numbers from? From other Mexicans. Again, look, you can go and do the research yourself. I'm just a guy, you know, making videos on YouTube. Take everything with what I say with a grain of salt. But anyways, just boots on the ground, uh, you know, information, boots on the ground, uh, what you might call it, knowledge from talking to other Mexicans, from watching lots of Spanish Mexican content, knowing, you know, what they're actually making because I watch a lot of that stuff because I speak Spanish. I'm married to a Mexican. I'm very, you know, I'm trying to be as integrated as possible within the culture, within everything. So I, I look into these things and, um, and I've talked about it multiple times in multiple videos. We're not going to discuss that, you know, as to what the typical Mexican makes these days, you know, and, and all that. But let's just, again, we've already said that for the most part, a Mexican these days is making around a thousand dollars a month give or take all right forget the government statistic you know the reason that there are no government statistic to prove this is because again most mexicans don't pay taxes it's a very different system out here you know it's not because they don't want to pay taxes it's because it's makes it very difficult for them to do so and because of how the system is set up there's no real penalty again i make i make other videos you know discussing all this in way more detail i'm trying to just uh you know talk about gentrification here and so with that being said, the typical Mexican is just making more. So, you know, whenever you see all of these nice, fancy things, it's not only that the Mexicans want it, but a lot of them are opening or creating these businesses. I've shown you multiple times when I walk around a lot of the neighborhoods in which you're seeing right now. And in fact, you might be seeing it in some of the video footage that I'm showing you right now. But when I walk around these neighborhoods, you get to see it even more um, when I bike in the neighborhoods sometimes see it because it's a little slower it's you know when i go in the car it's a lot faster but long story short <laughs> you can see it yourself this is why i show you these angles in my content while i talk to you because in the videos you can see it in a lot of these neighborhoods that look dangerous or shady or poor or whatever you want to call them all right um at the end of the day you, you, you're seeing all these little things pop up you know whether it's an artisanal sandwich shop or a again a coffee shop you know but again it's not like uh super fancy frou-frou you know like a starbucks per se where you know only a certain clientele can come in no anyone in the neighborhood can come in they're using you know again the fancy beans that they grew you know um locally and all this other stuff and you know all, all this stuff is basically not as stuck up okay or as a uh, hipster as you might think the reality is, is that you got to remember most of the people that are entrepreneurs these days, you know, in Mexico are in their 30s, you know, 20s to 30s. And they have access to, you know, this thing called the phone. All right. And they have Instagrams and, and TikToks and all that other stuff. So when they're starting their business, guess what? They're going to make it look very fancy, very nice. They're going to make it look, you know, and give the customer and the client the best experience possible. And remember, everyone has access to all this knowledge and technology and all this other stuff. So most people out here can, again, with just a few bucks, in a sense, start up a business and make it look like a Baskin Robbins or a Starbucks or whatever. And if they have a, you know, or a really fancy, you know, smash burger, and if at the end, and, and not with, with very little um, money, but a lot of effort and a lot of work, which most Mexicans can put in. So long story short, when they're gentrifying and you're, you're seeing these places that are nice and fancy and popping up in these places, well, guess what? Everyone wants to go to these places. All of a sudden, you know, it makes more of these places and one thing leads to another. And, and everything just gets nicer. And so a lot of people are like, oh, it's gentrifying. But if you go, um, you know, uh, foreigners or expats or, you know, whatever are coming out here and they're gentrifying. Well, the thing is, again, if you go out there and you look at who owns these businesses that are being, you know, the gentrifying, you know, businesses, then you're going to see that they're mostly Mexicans. Now, yes, 
in places like Merida or in other places, you know, um, Mexico City and, you know, again, the Roma district, you know, whatever. And same as here in Merida in certain places, you know, um, you're going to find that a lot of the gentrification, okay, is, you know, geared toward the upscale, towards the upper class, towards the 1%. Listen, I come from Miami. If you come from Miami, Los Angeles, a lot of these cities, you already know, They've been doing this for the longest time. There's a there's, you know, a, an economy for the super haves, super rich and an economy for the regular people. And so in some of these places, you, you're seeing some of these areas that are being gentrified and they're being and they're catering to a high end client, a high end luxury client. But let me again, let's get this straight. When you are Mexican now. All right. And uh, you are, again, being priced out of your fancy Mexican neighborhood. It's the same thing as you being priced out of your fancy American neighborhood in the USA. Now, when it happens, again, no one wants to be priced out. But what also happens is that a lot of people that are now now living in these fancy neighborhoods, that again, the reason that they get to charge these high prices is because they're in demand. It's a Basic economics is basically supply and demand in many of these cases. So, you, you know, when you might see an influx and a, and a higher degree of, let's say, foreigners there, but you're also seeing a lot of Mexicans that live there and they can afford to live there and they want to live there. You know, there's a lot of Mexicans that, you know, for whatever reason, you know, whether they, you know, earned it or they work in a certain, you know, market, you know, they might live in those areas um, or they have certain jobs or certain careers, you know, they might live in those areas. Um, and it's just the same as it ever was, just like any other part of the world. And so, you know, the reality is, is that it's impossible for it only to be just foreigners. Otherwise, it would be a completely different problem. Trust me. I know there's a lot of foreigners in a lot of these cities, but it's nowhere near, you know, how many foreigners are in the USA, for example. Now, speaking of that, you know, Mexico has always been a very diverse place. You know, a lot of people oh, just have the misconception that Mexico um, is just Mexicans and only Mexicans, and they're all brown, and they're all the same color. That's not true. There's many Mexicans that look like Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, or that look like, you know, Leonardo whatever, you know, or I was gonna say, you know what I mean. You know, if you go and do your research, you, or you live out here in Mexico, you come to go to certain parts of Mexico, you know, there are Mexicans that are, you know, just as white as the whitest guy in the USA, and just as black, you know, as, you know, the blackest person in the USA. <laughs> You know what I mean? Anyways, at the end of the day, it's a large spectrum of individuals, you know, and people that have come from all parts of the world. Many have come from Asia. Many have come from, you know, the Arab countries. You know, there is a lot of Lebanese. There's a lot of, you know, Arab influence in Mexico. In fact, the most popular taco in Mexico, which is tacos al pastor, comes from basically the giant shawarma. If you've ever seen that giant spit of uh you know meat in which you know they're slicing meat off of it to make tacos well that's the gyro so again that's the influence you know so there's a lot of influence out here i'm a lot of asian influence you know my wife you know is part korean part chinese you know part you know god knows what but long story short she has a lot of influence that comes from asia and I could go on and on. And so when you live out here, when you move out here, you realize, oh, my God. Like, for example, me, you know, I'm, I'm Cuban, but I could also be Mexican. My name is Adiaga. There's plenty of, plenty of places in Mexico named Adiaga, like my last name, like you see right there. And long story short, you know, um... I'm, I'm a white Spaniard, you know what I mean? Like, uh, that's what I am. And there's a lot of people like me, just like a lot of people that are still, you know, um, Mayan or Aztec or whatever other Indian group. And just and a lot of people that are mixed in between everything and anything you can imagine, because Mexico is a very diverse country. And it's going to continue to be diverse as the time goes on. It's just as simple as that. And so the reality is, is that, you know, right now, the whole foreigner thing, you know, causing gentrification couldn't be any further from the truth. Now, now, is foreign investment, are foreigners coming out here and, you know, causing some gentrification? Yes, of course. Are a lot, a lot of foreigners coming out here and investing in Mexico and making Mexico, you know, 
blossom and great yes it's happening but guess what that's really been happening within mexico for the longest time okay and i don't want to get into all the gory details but long story short you know there's a group out there you know that is responsible for a lot of the growth in mexico whether you like it or not and most of it has been positive and if you go back and you really look at like I have, you know, I'll watch videos and commercials and, and, and just, you know, um, movies and all kinds of things from Mexico of, you know, again, in the 1980s, 70s, 90s, you know, um, 2000. And you're like, my God, this is not that far off to the USA. If you look at major cities in Mexico, you go to Monterrey, you go to, again, Merida, where you are now, you go to... Um, Mexico City, you go to Guadalajara and you're like, oh my God, these are mega cities with mega buildings and mega industries and so many people and everything is like, oh my God, amazing. And so you, you, if you really just travel and you go around Mexico for a little bit, you quickly realize, oh wow, this, they have money here. This is, Mexicans are... This is, they're doing pretty well here, man. This is this is looking better than Philadelphia. This is looking better than Baltimore. This is looking better than name your city. It doesn't matter, all right? You know what I mean. So now, don't get me, you know, started on, you know, the whole, you know, whether Mexico is 100% safe or not. We'll leave that for other videos. The reality is, is that Mexico is very safe. You know, Mexico um, has its issues, just like every other country. Mexico is very unsafe in many regions just like your country, okay? Especially in the USA, okay? But that's not what we're talking about here. So again, to get back on topic as to what is causing gentrification out here in Mexico. And the reality is, is that it's just other Mexicans. I was reading an article in the a Mexican newspaper, you know, online, um, talking about said issue, about foreigners, you know, the, the whole article was, uh, you know, Merida, Merida, Yucatan, which is the city I live in, and you're seeing in the video there, um, Merida, Yucatan has one of the highest rates of foreigners in Mexico, you know, there's all these other cities, da, 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 but Merida has, you know, a lot of influx of foreigners, and da, da, da. but anyways, we did a poll and we are going to show you, um, you know, where all the foreigners are coming from. So, oh my God, I clicked on the, on the link. I was definitely really interested. And when I clicked on the link and I started seeing, you know, the list of foreigners, basically, you know, every single place was a Mexican city. So long story short, the majority of the foreigners coming to Merida, to this part of Mexico, or other Mexicans. And it's not just this city. Many cities around Mexico are, real, are seeing the same thing, where it's, again, more and more Mexicans, you know, are just having a better go at it. You know, they're just, you know, their economy, their personal economy is a lot better than what it used to be. They're making more, they have more ability to spend because again, not only are they making more, but their peso is stronger. Um, they're, they're not hitting inflation as hard, you know, meaning they're not seeing as much of an inflation hit here in this part of the world as they are in other parts of the world. And again, the fact that Mexico itself has created for themselves and their people a formula for success meaning most mexicans have a home believe it or not so this is how it works in mexico and a lot of mexican households they eventually just end up inheriting a house so they'll they'll end up inheriting a house you know from their parents and it's not just the house that they grew up in since mexicans don't trust the banks don't trust you know government and so on and so forth what a lot of mexicans end up doing is that they just you know they have no other place to put their money there's only so much you know gold and silver and valuables they can keep in a safe under the house and again they don't trust the, the banks and the government which again you should learn from but long story short what they end up doing is that they end up buying homes. And so they buy homes and eventually, you know, it gets to a point where they just give them away to their children or any other children, you know, inherit it or what have you. So most, you know, people out here have access to that. Also, you know, again, I know there's a lot of Mexicans that, you know, complain about, you know, how difficult it is. And, and I get it. You know what I mean? Yes, there's a lot of Mexicans out here in Mexico that have a very difficult time, you know, making it 
just like they do in the USA. But I'm telling you, things are very different than they are in our own countries. And there is a lot more, you know, ways in which you can succeed out here and, you know, just have more opportunity and freedom and chances and so on and so forth. Okay, so let me just give you a quick example as to what I mean with the whole housing situation, okay? So let's just say that you're not in any position to be inheriting any homes. You know, you can't afford, you know, to buy a home, let alone rent a home. Um, you know, you're, you know, you're just not doing well as a Mexican. You know, you've had a lot, you know, you're poor. You're very, very poor and you just are, you know, you don't have anything really afforded to you. Well, guess what? At the very least, you can just go out there into the vast land. There's tons of land all over the all over Mexico um, that is not owned by anyone. All right. Just by Mexico. And you as a Mexican city citizen, you as a Mexican citizen have all the right to just go and claim some land for yourself to live on now i am super simplifying it but long story short that's basically kind of like how it works out that's why it's very rare to really find any kind of homeless or homeless situation out here in mexico as opposed to how it works in the usa because out here worst case scenario you can just go out there and get yourself some land build yourself a home and do whatever and it's all legal stegal beagle that's your right as a mexican citizen so, as you're right as a Mexican citizen here in Mexico. So, you know, there's just so many things like that, you know, that I could go on and on that when you really kind of like stack them up and add them up, you like, you realize, oh, wait a minute. You know what I mean? Most Mexicans, you know, by their hard work, by, you know, just figuring things out, you know, they've been able to, you know, not only survive, but thrive. And now that they're in a position in which Mexico is pushing ahead and, and leaving behind, you know, the rest of the world, because you're seeing it right now, you're seeing as a Mexican peso is getting stronger and the dollar and other currencies are getting weaker in comparison to it you're really seeing you know the potential of mexico and where it can head all right so i think we've answered a bunch of these questions you know what's causing it well again mostly a lot of other mexicans mostly the fact that the mexican economy is just getting better and better each and every day the strength of the peso in the world and you know not just here you know but on the world stage the fact that most mexicans are making more money as you know things are moving in the world right now it seems like mexico is only going to get stronger and better just because of uh you know more manufacturing and more work jobs money are coming to mexico in fact you know look at what happened to china just a, a few decades ago and you know where they were and where they ended up well look at mexico imagine where mexico could be you know with uh, a better government system you know and uh you know the people understanding and having freedom you know not just understanding their freedoms but you know exercising their freedoms you know as opposed to china so you saw what happened with china imagine something similar being able to happen here in mexico and with all the ties that they have to the usa imagine how awesome it's going to be you know what i mean i think again mexico and the usa are only going to get more you know uh stronger together and so this whole idea of you know mexico getting gentrified and it's being a bad thing you know it's it's really not that at all you know what i mean the typical mexican it doesn't matter what their income level is they all want an iphone they all want you know to be youtubers they all want to have a starbucks eat a mcdonald's hamburger wear some blue jeans listen to rock and roll whatever you know what i mean on top of that, you know, they want to be Mexican and they want to keep all their Mexican, you know, stuff, you know, so don't, don't, again, don't be panicking out there thinking that, you know, Mexico is going to change, you know, overnight into the USA or any, or, or, or into something else. No, Mexico is going to be uniquely Mexico and is always going to remain Mexico. It's just that you got to remember, there's a lot of cultural influence around the world and a lot of it comes from the USA and Mexico's next door to the USA. But at the end of the day, you know, the only thing that, you know, a lot when people are really talking about gentrification more than anything else is that, you know, the typical Mexican now is having a nicer, fancier home. The typical Mexican now has a nicer, fancier car. The typical Mexican has a nicer, fancier job. The typical Mexican has better education, you know, more access to that, even more than, than before. Same as medicine, you know, things like, you know, now most Mexicans, you know, even poor Mexicans have access to, you know, um, 
free um, what's your therapy and free uh, you know mental health uh, uh, you know doctors and all that other stuff. So you know things that you know again think about it as Mexico is growing you know and becoming this major power you know on the world stage you know they have all of these things that we do and then some. And they're going to be helping it, you know, improve and, and get better. So this whole gentrification, if that's the way you want to look at it, we haven't seen anything yet. You know, wait until you see Mexico really blossom, you know, as more and more of these things, you know, uh, you know, happen in Mexico and um, throughout Mexico. You know what I mean? Not just in the major cities and in certain areas, but everywhere. And you're going to see the major growth. And a lot of people, you know, again, it depends on how you look at it, it will depend you know, on whether you think it's a good thing or bad thing. But for the most part, what gentrification really means is just a better, better life, you know, better quality of life, better access to better things to the typical person out there. Okay. Because at the end of the day, you know, the poorest of the poor people want to take a hot shower. You know what I mean? The poorest of the poor people, they still want to experience, you know, um, a lot of the things that most of us take for granted. So just on that end of the spectrum, okay? And then if you're on the other end of the spectrum, you know, let's say that, you know, hey, you're rich and you made a lot of money and you've done a lot of, and you've done really good for yourself as a Mexican. Well, guess what? You know, outside of Mexico, you used to just be a bum, but now, you know, hey, you're making a lot of pesos. Well, guess what? You know, you're rich, not just in Mexico, but you're rich everywhere else. You know, you can go to Japan and you're rich. You, know, you can just go to live in the fancy neighborhoods in Mexico, which you might want to do. And then most importantly than anything else, there's a giant middle class and with a giant middle class which by the way there used to be a tiny middle class in mexico but now the middle class is growing and growing and growing and to the point where it's a giant middle class like it used to be in the usa and this giant middle class again just like the usa went through its many years golden years amazing years you know of uh, amazing capitalism well so will mexico Mexico's going to want, you know, to get all the fancy toys for their kid. You know, they're going to want to give them all the fancy education, all the fancy everything. Um, you know, it, it, the people want Nikes. You know, the people want all the fancy things. And again, it's not because it's they are vain and they want all these things and it's going to turn into this capitalist hellhole again. You know, just like it, you know, something in the USA and it's all about that. No, it's not that. You know, at the end of the day, remember, we talked about this in multiple videos that, you know, there's a lot of things involved when it comes to that. And a lot of it has to do with family and values and morals and all these other things. So all these things are still strong and well. But and you see it all over the world. You see many places all over the world that have all these fancy things. OK, and they live exactly like we do or better in the USA, Canada, whatever. And, uh, you know, um, they they get to keep their way of life and their culture, you know, alive and well. And so in, in the USA and in Canada, you know, that's another situation, you know, again, not about not what we're talking about in this video. But what I mean is that even though, you know, um, it's going to have all of these fancy things, you know, I, I just say fancy things, but a lot of us are just regular things. OK, but just access to Ikea, access to, you know, um, things that we take for granted, like Amazon you know um you know iphones you know uh it just everything and anything you know um that is gonna allow them to really you know like blossom and take it to the next level as to where where the typical mexican wants to get to again everyone around the world wants to succeed everyone wants to you know make something of themselves and now everyone in today's world because of all the technology of everything that we have in in in, in today's world you know uh, it allows anyone doesn't matter who you are to make it really make it and so this whole american dream is now everywhere you know for the most part and in most countries and so same thing with mexico and uh that's it you know, I think that's really what we're going to see. The whole idea of like gentrification really being a bad thing is is not. I think it's more, uh, you know, just fake news, you know, than anything else. Because, again, if you ask a typical Mexican whether they want, you know, any all this fancy stuff, you know, what I mean, that everyone else has around the world, they're going to say yes. You know, why wouldn't they? You know, do, 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 when you ask a typical Mexican if they want to make more money, they're going to say yes. If you're going to ask a typical Mexican, you know, all of these things, you know, that are very obvious answers to, they're going to say yes. You know, why would a typical Mexican not want 
any of these things just like why wouldn't you and everyone else all right all right so we're gonna wrap this bad boy up i really hope that you guys enjoyed this episode talking about this issue i know it's a complicated issue and i would really love to hear your comments i would really love to continue this conversation down below so that we can all educate ourselves again i love all of the comments and all of the information provided by you know foreigners expats you know, all the viewers, Mexican viewers, I really appreciate my Mexican viewers more than anything else, you know, when it comes to certain topics like this that really, really, really add, you know, a lot more context to what I'm saying, you know, out of their own mouths. Um, but long story short, you know, I really hope that you enjoy this kind of video, enjoy these topics, you know, um, please let me know down below, you know, what you think, you know, one way or the other. Um, with all that being said, I want to give a big shout out to all my members, all my patrons, all my new subscribers, old subscribers, every single one of you that has, you know, been helping me and helping the show and helping us build this giant community here that just keeps growing and growing more every month, you know, that you know these videos are really not just to help you know you guys but to help everyone out there you know that that watches this because a lot of these topics a lot of these things you know whether i'm making these videos or i'm answering questions on thursday or whatever it is i'm doing it's really we're all helping each other out here you know that's it that's really what we're doing we're all just helping each other out because i know there's a lot of people that are still on the other side of the fence all the way in the usa canada whatever and you know they're looking for a solution to their problems you know whether it's leaving to mexico another country or not you know um and so like i really try to make these videos so that they can make a more educated decision as to whether or not it is going to be a good decision for them to leave or not and and so on and so forth and so you know in the case of what's going on with mexico right now with you know gentrification the fact is is that again things are getting more expensive here and um, it's only to the benefit of mexicans so anyone else coming out here, it will be getting tougher and tougher as each day rolls on, you know, um, you know, for you to do your thing out here with your dollars or your euros or your whatever. So, again, that's also why you might be seeing a lot more extra investment out here from foreign investors, because they're simply just trying to, you know, again, keep some sort of value in their dying currencies. So, again, you guys, you already know if you want more detailed conversations talking about all of these topics and then some please check out the rest of my channel check out the live streams check out everything all the information that i have on my channel all the free information that i not only i have on the channel but i have on my website and i have you know provided for you guys so that you guys can again make the best most educated decision whether you know whether you want to come to mexico or not so with all that being said you already know the deal guys thanks again for watching don't forget to please like please subscribe please share please hit that bell icon but more importantly than anything else please stay awesome thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one bye